welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations and today we're going to be doing a fun summer tumbler. So today's tutorial is basically a brush stroke tumbler with actual brush strokes. We're not going to be using water slide or anything like that. And we're going to be using some bright neon acrylic paints that I do go back and tone down just a little bit with white to give it more of a understated look. I also go back and add some gold leafing to the tumbler. I am so glad that I did that because it just kind of pulls everything together. And then of course I add my leopard swirl and today we are actually going to be doing gold leaf spots on our leopard, which was the first time for me and I really, really like how it turned out. So if you guys are ready to learn how to do this fun summer bright brush stroke tumbler, let's get started. So first things first, we're going to start with a tumbler that is prepped and painted white and then gather the colors that you want to use. I use these little neon colors. They do sell them in the larger container, but not every color is sold. So I just buy the small ones when I can find them. And I take a fairly thin brush and literally just brush on the paint color. I am using a few colors, so I don't want to put too much of one color on at first. You can always go back and add more of a certain color if you need to or you feel like you want more of that color. But I do leave a lot of open space so I can go back and add the different colors. So after I get done with one color, I will dip my brush in some water. And I will dip it into the next color and go right beside the first color and lay the second color. And when you're doing this, um, your knowledge of basic art is going to come into play because whatever color you lay next to the first one is going to mix a little bit. So you want to make sure that it's not going to make some weird color or, or one that you don't like. So for example, when I'm laying my yellow next to the pink, it is creating a orange where they meet or where they overlap, which I really like. So that way you get pink, orange, and yellow right there on your cup. And then we're going to go in with our third color and lay it next to our second color. So we're laying the blue next to the yellow. And here again with your colors, it is going to create green. So we're getting our yellow, blue, and green right there. And then when we get done with our blue, we are going to go back with our very first color, which was pink. And we are going to lay that next to our blue. And where those two colors meet, it's going to create a purple. So this way we are creating our different colors, which kind of helps the colors blend together a little bit. I did put some of my other colors down just in case I needed them, the actual orange, purple, and green, but I really liked the look of the blended colors. And you guys can see that the further along I got in the tumbler, the slower I was moving with my brush strokes because I wanted to be sure that I wasn't overlapping three colors at once. I really just wanted to keep them concentrated to overlapping that one color. And we are basically going to do these three steps until there is no more white showing on our tumbler. So we lay our pink, then we lay our yellow, then we lay our blue, and then we start all over again. 
and we are still laying them next to the same colors. And obviously you don't have to use these colors if you don't want to. You can use the same color family, all blues or all pinks, or you can use pastel colors, which I think would be really pretty, which is pretty much what my tumbler ended up looking like when I toned it down with the white, but I did like the look of the brighter colors as well. And when my blank space kind of started running out, I just picked certain colors to go back and touch up just to try to cover as much of the base coat as I could. And this is also why I chose a smaller brush instead of a thicker one. That way I could go up and touch up little areas if I needed to. And when this color dried, I decided to go back with some white and tone it down a little bit. I did want to wait until it was dry because I didn't want to blend these colors together and make them look muddy. I really just wanted to tone down the top colors just a little bit. So I basically just took a dry bristle brush and just barely touched the tip of the paintbrush into the white paint and brushed it all over the tumbler. I didn't want to add too much because I still wanted those colors to shine through. I just wanted to mute them a little bit. And then when the white was dry, I added the gold leaf. And I'm so glad that I added this gold leaf. I really think it turned out cool. I was debating on adding it or not, but I am so glad that I did. And I just took a glue stick and kind of ran it all over the cup. No real rhyme or reason. I just, you know, followed different brush strokes and applied the glue, basically. <laughs> I did focus more on the top part of the tumbler because I wanted the top and bottom to have a little bit more of the gold leaf and the middle of the tumbler to be a little bit more sparing. And I typically use the sheets when I can. I like working with them better, but I was almost out of them, so I think I only had two sheets left, and then I had to use my flakes. <laughs> and even though I don't like working with the flakes, they still worked. I just kind of pulled them off. Um, the flakes that I get are actually more like cut sheets. They're not, you know, tiny little flakes. They're actually kind of like longer lines of gold leaf. I don't know if that even makes sense to y'all. <laughs> but I get my bags from Hobby Lobby and Michael's. And then I just kind of rubbed the gold leaf off and went on to the next section. I went ahead and rubbed off what I could just so I could see what areas needed gold leaf because the sheets are kind of, you know, took up a lot of room on there. <laughs> so you guys can see that my gold leaves are kind of like long little strips. <laughs> And you do kind of have to work fast if you're going to use a glue stick. Um, I know several people use quick coat or other methods to apply gold leaf, but I have always just used a glue stick. I like it because it does dry quick, so you're not waiting for something um, to dry so that you can brush it off. And I basically just applied the leaf, um, pressed it down where I could, and then just kind of move on to the next section.
and I was just kind of picking up random little pieces of gold leaf and kind of smudging them on to the cup. I was going for more of a distressed look, which I really like how it turned out. I pretty much love anything that has gold leaf on it, so I do work with it a lot. And like you guys can tell, I'm really not too worried about the placement of the gold leaf. So don't stress too much about that when you're trying to apply it. I just apply the glue and then apply the gold leaf. You can always go back and add more in spots if you want, or you can, you know, try to scrape it off if you don't like it or use a bristle brush to kind of scrape it off because it's just glue. So at this point I was just kind of going around checking where I might need to add a little bit more on the top of my tumbler or the bottoms because I did want those top and bottom rims to be a little bit more heavy. And I will let this dry for just a little bit, just because I don't want that glue stick to, you know, get kind of clumpy when I'm brushing it off. But once the glue is dried, I will brush off all of this gold leaf. Oh yes, and I did forget to mention that you do want to make sure you get your bottom too. I decided just to do gold leaf on my bottom instead of colors. I just, you know, you can do whatever way you want though. If you would rather your bottom be the bright colors, then you can do that. But I just decided to cover mine with gold leaf. So now I will take my bristle brush and just start kind of brushing off the leaf. I do prefer to use a stiffer brush than a softer brush because I do like the distressed look of the gold leaf. If you don't want a distressed look of the gold leaf, then you might want to get a more fluffy brush because it will produce a different look. And I do kind of scrub my gold leaf kind of hard. That way it does scratch up the leaf that is on the tumbler, which produces that distressed look. And I kind of went around the center of my tumbler first because I knew that that glue was dried first, where I was a little heavy handed um, around the rims. And as you brush it off, you can always go back and add more like I'm doing now. I just kind of added little dabs of gold here and there. And just continue brushing it off. And I really like how this this looked. I thought about leaving it and not adding leopard print, but I love leopard print, so I decided to use it. But I think the colors were perfect for spring and summer, which is coming up. And um, I really, really like how it looks.
And now we're going to use clear gloss spray and champagne glitter to apply our leopard swirl. I am going to spray the clear spray paint at an angle as I turn the cup. And then we're just going to sprinkle on the glitter. So I went outside and sprayed this really quickly. And then I came back and sprinkled my glitter. And now I am just going to spray the edges of this swirl. Just to get that shape a little more how I want it. So I am just sprinkling the glitter right at the edge of the swirl just to get the shape more formed into a swirl, I guess. So as it waterfalls down the tumbler, it creates that gradient effect. And I forgot my tea strainer, which you guys know I use for every gradient or ombre that I do. So I had to run outside and grab it really quick. <laughs> so I'm going to spray along the edges one last time and come back and use this tea strainer just to get that more gradient effect. So I sprinkle it right along the edge and let it waterfall down the tumbler. And that way it has that more gradient effect that I was looking for. And then I'm going to spray seal this really good and then come back and do my leopard spots. So for this one, I am going to do gold leaf leopard spots, which is something I've never done before, but figured I would try it. I did not epoxy my tumbler yet. I just am applying this to the raw glitter that was sealed. Again, I did this because it kind of keeps in with the distressed look that I'm going for. If I wanted my gold leaf to be you know, extremely smooth, then I would have epoxied first, but I decided not to do that, and I really like the outcome that this produced. So the glitter had been sealed with Rust-Oleum two times, about two times, and then I let it dry before I applied this gold leaf. So I am just applying my center spots. And then I will go back and apply the black of leopard spots with actual black glitter. And I go in and add some of the little random spots that you see on leopards, I decided to make them gold. So I will take my paintbrush again and brush off all of this gold, which does go everywhere. <laughs> I really had to clean up after I did these tumblers. <laughs> but I just kind of lightly brushed these off. I didn't want to, you know, distress them a whole lot because they already had that distressed look from the glitter underneath. So I was just basically brushing off the part of the gold leaf that wasn't attached with the glue. And now we are ready to apply our black glitter. 
which I do apply all my glitter with paint if I can instead of Mod Podge because I hate Mod Podge. It takes forever to dry. So I try to avoid using it if I can. So basically all I do is dab black acrylic paint in the pattern that I want along the center spots. And I do more of a dabbing motion than a swiping motion. I feel like it gives it more of a realistic feel. And once I get all the edges of my spots dabbed, <laughs> then I go back and sprinkle on the black glitter. And one other reason why I like using black paint um, versus Mod Podge is that if there are any bare spots of glitter, then you won't see gold through it. You will just see black. And then I bang it off and I go back and add the other little random spots that are on leopards. <laughs> and once I get all of those on there, then I will sprinkle the glitter again. And once I get all the glitter that I want onto the cup, I will brush it off really well once all the paint is dried. And I will spray seal it really well. And then I will add it to my turner and epoxy it two times. So I always epoxy my cups two times before I do any type of sanding because I want to make sure that all of the glitter is covered 100% and I'm not going to be sanding any of the glitter off when I go to sand my cups. So I always apply my epoxy in a motion from up to down or down to up. That way I'm not going to have weird sideways ridges <laughs> and then be sure to get your bottoms I always do just the thinnest coat on the bottom that I can that way my bottoms are going to be level when I take them off and not have lumps of epoxy so after I apply my epoxy I always wipe from bottom to top to get any excess epoxy that may be on there because I want to smooth it out very, very good. Then I will take my torch and pop all the bubbles. I always do one or two rotations. I usually move my torch from top to bottom, um, but my tripod was in my way, so I had to do it this way. And once that last layer of epoxy is cured, we are going to sand the rims and the bottom. So since it's chilly outside, I decided just to use my sanding block and do it inside. So I just angle the sanding block on the rim and basically just scrub all the way around the cup. This will take off about one or two millimeters of paint and epoxy leaving a really smooth stainless rim showing and this will ensure that everything is sealed in on our final coats of epoxy. I also sand my bottom and the center of the tumbler 
If you wanted to add a decal, it would be after this step that you added a decal or a name. But since I am not adding a decal or name, I will pop this right back on my turner for the final layer or two of epoxy. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I really liked how this turned out. It's just a fun summer tumbler. I hope you guys liked it. It was easy to follow and I cannot wait to see what kind of color combinations y'all come up with. If y'all enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to watch the next video coming up. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, don't forget to find my tutorial group on Facebook that is linked in the video description. Thanks for watching.